Hello everybody. For the month of February, I have been finishing all my wrap ups for 2019 and I have been vlogging and showing you guys what I've been reading during February, but I have yet to share with you the books that I read in January. They've been kind of forgotten until now. I am doing a January wrap up so that we will be all caught up on the books that I've read in 2020 so far. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this might be the first time that I am ever doing a monthly wrap-up video. So that's kind of exciting, honestly. So let's just get into them. There were nine books that I read in January of 2020. I will just talk about them in the order that I read them. So the first book of the year for me was actually a reread, and it was 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstad. This is, I guess you would say YA because the main characters are all teenagers. So it's a YA horror thriller sort of novel. I guess it's a fictionalized version of the world where NASA has decided to launch a new space mission. It's sending up a team of people to the moon to kind of reopen this old moon base that the United States put up there, but never touched again. And to drum up excitement for this mission, they do like a worldwide contest and three teenagers are going to go to the moon. It's a little ridiculous, but we end up following the three teenagers who win the contest. So we're following a girl from Norway, and I believe that the book is originally published in Norway in Norwegian. It is a translated work. And then we also follow a boy from France and then a girl from Japan. And the three teenagers win the contest, they start training for the moon mission, and then things happen. It's very ominous kind of the whole time you know that something is not right about this moon mission and then stuff starts happening and it's it's extremely spooky. I wanted to reread this because I was talking to my sister about scary books and how I don't usually get scared by books, but this book legitimately scared me the first time I read it. Talking about it again, it made me just want to reread the book and find out if it would scare me as much the second time around. And to be honest, no, it didn't scare me quite as much. A big part of the reason this scared me so much the first time I read it was because it was the end of the school year. I was living in a house with some people and everyone moved out except for me. I was the last one living there. And so like I was in a completely empty house. Everyone had moved all their furniture out. I had packed up all my stuff so I was like sleeping on the floor in an empty house listening to this book and it really freaked me out. This time around wasn't as scary but I do think that this book has some genuinely heart-stopping moments just like there are a couple things that happen in this book that I'm just like oh no 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 no. I really enjoy this book because it is like horror about the moon and I really do find like space scary stories to be super thrilling. I think that outer space is a fantastic setting for thrillers and horror things. They just really get to me for some reason. So overall, I really enjoyed this book both times I read it. I believe that the first time I read it, I gave it 3.5 stars. I was really close to giving it four stars because it did affect me quite a bit, but I ended up going with 3.5 because Honestly, there are weaknesses in the character development and the writing. I have seen a lot of people saying that the translation of this book is really bad. Obviously, I can't say for sure whether the weaknesses in the writing are due to the author or maybe a stilted translation, but I feel like that's definitely a possibility here. However, I still would recommend this book. I think that this would be a super good gateway into horror because it's YA. It's not super like gory or disturbing. It's just very creepy and it has some really good like scary, scary moments. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this if you have never picked up horror, but you kind of want to because for me at least, as someone who doesn't read horror, I find it to be a really accessible way to enjoy the genre. Next up is The Long Ride by Marina Budos. This is a middle grade book. It is historical fiction and it follows these three girls who have all grown up together as best friends. Their parents are all friendly. They all live in like the same apartment complex in New York City. It takes place in the 1970s, I believe. And basically what this is about is that they have all gone to school together throughout their lives, but all of a sudden their school is like taking part in this 
integration program. So they're now going to a brand new school and the long ride refers to the long bus ride that they have to take to this school that is like in a completely different part of town than they live. It's also about them being separated for the first time because two of the girls end up going to this school and the third one get sent to a private school instead of this. All three of these girls are mixed race and it is really about the experience of growing up mixed race in the 1970s. The main characters are also experimenting a lot for the first time with dating and that type of like coming of age story is a big part of this novel as well. I really really liked this. I thought it was super high quality middle grade fiction. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who is looking to pick up diverse middle grade. It was super good. I really enjoyed the historical fiction aspect of this book. The 70s is like a time period where it's it's close enough to present day for this to feel a bit like a contemporary, but it's also a political and social climate that was different enough from modern day for this book to really feel like it takes place in a different time and to really feel like it was teaching me a lot about a different time period. Of course, I loved the diversity of the three main characters and the different experiences that they have. I just really liked seeing that experience, especially in a middle grade book. It was so, so refreshing to read about. So, so interesting. I, again, teetered between giving this 3.5 and 4 stars. I ended up settling on 3.5 stars and that is because I was not really into the dating element of this book. I mean, I actually really appreciate that this was talked about very frankly in middle grade because there are middle school students who do start dating. And so I commend this book for talking about that and depicting really real experiences with that. But to be honest, I just like was not super into the relationship of this girl and like her first boyfriend. It just ended up taking up a big portion of this book and so I wasn't as interested in that plot line. So that's why it just kind of got bumped down slightly, but I still, again, would highly recommend this book. Definitely a book that I just, I feel like everybody should read and would enjoy. Next up we have The Dollhouse Murders by Betty Wren Wright. This is an older book. I think it's maybe published in like the 70s or 80s and it is uh, another middle grade and it's kind of like a, a ghost spooky story. Basically it follows this girl who is staying with her aunt for a little bit. Her aunt is fixing up her old childhood home and she hasn't really been back there since the murder of her parents. She doesn't really want to reopen those memories or those wounds. Our protagonist finds this dollhouse that is a replica of the house that they're staying in and you can guess it the the dollhouse is haunted and there are creepy things happening with that dollhouse i thought this book was okay but i didn't love it it being an older book it felt very dated i thought it was an okay story but I mostly just wanted to know what the mystery was and I wanted to find out what happened there. I wasn't really attached to the main character or her personal story. A large part of this book is kind of about the main character feeling very resentful of her sister who is developmentally disabled in some sort of way. It doesn't really say, but basically she feels like a caretaker for her sister and she just wants to like have a normal teenage life with her friends and not have her sister hanging around at all times, which I feel like was a completely accurate depiction of how like a 12 year old girl might feel but it was a little bit of a bummer just to like constantly see disabled people being viewed like as a burden. I do feel like the book at the end did have pretty positive messages about disability. I feel like the younger sister who was disabled actually did get developed as a character and you like get to know her as an actual person. There was more to her than just her disability. So in the end I do feel like ultimately this concept of disabled people as burdens was challenged but I found it to be a little bit of a struggle to read about. I will say that there were some genuinely spooky moments in this book. Like there were a couple points where I was reading it where I was just like oh, what? It was scary for a couple moments. Kudos to it for that although I do feel like it was kind of just banking on the fact that 
creepy dolls like moving on their own is like gonna scare anybody like I don't really feel like the book did a great job creating a lot of tension it just was taking a pretty easy route in writing about scary dolls in the end I gave this 2.5 I was just very in the middle with it I had an okay time reading it but I don't really think I would have been missing out if I had skipped this one it was just okay Next up is Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. This is a fantasy book. It is marketed and published as YA, but I honestly see no reason that this is YA. I think that this reads like adult and it should be adult. Like to me, this just should have been adult. But basically this is a book that takes place in this fantasy world. It is a very stereotypical like classic fantasy world with a lot of stereotypical classic fantasy tropes. We start out with the prince, he is slaying the dragon, saving the princess, and he's bringing her home to become his queen. And so we follow this princess as she wakes up and basically discovers the world and discovers herself because she has absolutely no memories before being saved by this prince. It is about her coming to this kingdom and assuming this role of the soon-to-be queen and the way that she kind of realizes that she's not super happy with this situation. This book is basically just a dismantling of the damsel trope where we have the damsel in distress and we have the classic story of how she gets saved, but it's basically like what happens after she gets saved and did she even want to be saved in the first place? I absolutely loved this. I loved this book immediately when I started reading it. I thought that the writing in this book was incredible. Something about the descriptions, the way that the plot moved forward, the characters were described, the imagery of the book, like everything about this, I loved the writing. I was glued to this novel. I absolutely devoured it. I read a lot of reviews going into this book that were pretty negative and a lot of people didn't like the dark nature of this book. I saw more than one review that was like, this book is basically torture porn and I was like going into it really cautious because I thought I wouldn't like it. But I think maybe having had that warning, I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it was. There are depictions of sexual assault, cruelty to animals, physical, mental abuse. So there are a lot of triggering things in this book and there are a lot of really upsetting scenes. So definitely go into this cautious. But for me at least, my expectations for these scenes were way worse than they ended up being. So I guess I wasn't bothered as much as um, some other people were by this because I was so prepared. I actually really liked the darkness of this book. I feel like it was very pointed and it made you feel terrible for a reason. Something about it really worked for me. I was so surprised that I loved this book. I wasn't really expecting to like a fantasy book that had very mixed reviews, but I did. I don't know what to say. I absolutely loved it. I gave this four stars, but I feel like I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I think it might be more of a 4.5, honestly. I just really liked it. I really liked this book. Definitely my favorite thing I've read all year. Um, it probably will be one of my favorite books of 2020. Very unexpected. Next up, we have Wild Card by Marie Lu. This is the sequel to War Cross by Marie Lu. It's actually a duology, so this is the final book in the series. I read War Cross last year and I did not think it was the best but I did really enjoy it. I thought it was really fun, really entertaining. So I figured I would pick up the sequel and finish this series off. I believe the first book I gave 3.5 stars. I had a really good time reading it. I just didn't think it was super high quality. I had some issues with like the plot and stuff, but for the most part, I just thought it was like very delightful entertainment because it's basically about this girl who joins a professional Warcross team. Warcross is like this virtual reality game. It's a sci-fi novel imagining how virtual reality is going to affect society in the future. I thought that the first Warcross book was really fun because of all of the Warcross games we got to see and it was just so entertaining to watch people play this game that was basically limitless because it was virtual reality. But the sequel, 
didn't really have any of the game in it. So like that was the main thing I liked about the first book. And so this one was kind of a disappointment to me. I gave this book 2.5 stars. I just thought it was not that great. This book gets way more serious than the first book. It's so much more drama. The stakes are way higher. There's so many more intense moments because our main character has gotten caught up in this huge web of things I can't really talk about because it's it's going to spoil the first book. But we don't have like the fun elements of the first book. It's all drama. And I just didn't think the drama was that good. Like I just found the plot in general of this book series to be kind of silly. I wasn't really into the romantic relationship. I wasn't really into the mystery and the the crimes that are happening. I really, really just didn't care about it by the end of it. Like things wrapped up and I was just like, okay, great. I'm ready to move on with my life. The more I talk about this, 2.5 even feels generous and, and 3.5 even feels generous for the first Warcross book. I feel like it's more of like a three star and a two star for the second one, but whatever. I read it. We're done with it. It does feel good to have finished the series. So <laughs> that's a completed series off of my list. At least there's that. Next up, we have Nancy Drew Christmas by Carolyn Keene. This is from like the newer run of Nancy Drew. I believe that the series that they're currently publishing is called The Nancy Drew Diaries. And so this is the Christmas book in that series. I was on hold for this book at my library for so long. I wanted to read it during Christmas, but that didn't happen. I ended up reading it in January but that's fine. This follows Nancy as she goes to a ski resort in Montana and solves a mystery there. I mostly had fun with this book. Obviously, I like the fact that it was Nancy Drew. Always love me a good Nancy Drew book. I love the fact that it was centered around Christmas. Love me a Christmas setting. Another thing I really liked was that this book actually had a lot of environmental activism in it because the resort that she's staying at is an eco-friendly resort. So they're taking all these initiatives to reduce their carbon footprint. A huge part of the mystery has to do with this land that the resort owners own. And there's all of these debates over whether to put a pipeline through that land. And so this book is actually talking about the environmental effects of that. It shows a bunch of protesters against the pipeline. And it was like, super cool to see that in a Nancy Drew book. I really loved seeing so much discussion about environmental activism. I did not expect that to be in this book. Another thing that I really liked was that Nancy breaks her leg at the very beginning of the trip and she is in like a full leg cast in a wheelchair for this book. And so it, it basically is intentionally a ripoff of Rear Window where she is like immobile with this broken leg and she needs to like spy through the window into other people's rooms. I love Rear Window. I thought that that was a really funny and really enjoyable concept. One thing I didn't like about this book was that Nancy felt so young. I'm pretty sure that this new series is supposed to make Nancy 16, so she is a little bit younger, but I literally thought she was 12 for the entirety of the book. And then she like mentioned her boyfriend, Ned. I was like, that's a little weird that they made like Nancy and Ned boyfriend and girlfriend and she's like 11 years old. And then I realized that she was supposed to be 16 and I was like, oh, okay, this book does not read like she's 16 whatsoever. I just didn't really see the point in aging her down in the first place. And I really think that it was just like a huge misstep to try to age her down within the narrative because they shot way too hard. It felt like a middle grade book. That really bothered me that this was supposed to be like YA fiction and Nancy's supposed to be 16 didn't feel that way at all. I also just thought that there were way too many characters in this. There was a lot going on. It was kind of chaotic plot wise. It wasn't the best mystery I've ever read. It wasn't the best Nancy Drew book I've ever read, but I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. It was okay overall. I gave this three stars. Next up, we have Once Upon a Princess by Claire Lydon and Harper Bliss. This is a romance novel. I decided to check this book out because I was like in this weird mood where I, I kind of wanted to pick up a romance book. I don't read a lot of romance. It's not a genre I tend to like. 
but I was in the mood for like something contemporary, something very fluffy and tropey. I figured a romance novel would satisfy all of that. So I was kind of looking around to see if I was interested in any. I randomly found this from my library and it intrigued me because it's female female and one of the main characters is a princess. So I was like, you know what? I'm really into royalty fiction right now. Obviously I love queer fiction. So I decided to pick this one up. This was okay. I don't think it was super well written. It definitely wasn't super well plotted. I didn't really ever get into the relationship of this book. I liked the characters. I wanted them to get together because I knew that they were going to and I thought it was going to be cute, but I didn't feel like they had that much chemistry. I wasn't super passionate about them as a couple. Basically what this is about is that it follows the princess of, I, I think, England, and she is about to enter an arranged marriage. Her parents are basically making her marry this woman who is of the right social status and all of that, so it's like a good political move for them. She is the first out lesbian in the royal family, so she is marrying a woman, but she's not marrying a woman that she loves, and so she ends up taking a vacation to this small town in England, and she disguises herself by cutting her hair a little bit shorter and then putting on a pair of glasses, and she spends time in this little town, and she ends up befriending the owner of a local cafe, and then the two of them develop feelings for each other. And the whole time, the cafe owner doesn't know that she's a princess. This suspension of disbelief just was not there for me. How could you not recognize, like, l the literal royalty of your country standing right in front of you? They just put on a pair of glasses? Is this Superman? Like, no. What? It makes no sense. And it just especially bothered me because obviously both of these women are lesbians. And, like, I, I truly was like, how could a lesbian in England not care about the first lesbian member of the royal family. That would be so monumental. It would be so cool. She would at least know what she looks like. So that kind of bothered me. The ending was so much. I felt like everything happened so fast. It was so dramatic. The conflict that happens in the end is so obvious, like of course all of this is going to go down this way. The resolution was so over the top, it was just like ridiculous. When I finished it, I was honestly considering giving it three stars because I had an okay time reading it. It was an easy read, I flew through it and like mostly had fun reading it. It was okay. I was like, this was fine. And then I thought about it a little bit more and I was like, okay, if the, if the exact plot of this book happened with a man and a woman, I would have hated it. I would have given it one star. So I think the fact that this was queer, I was kind of giving it a little bit of leeway because I was like, I, I wanted to support it. But to be honest, this was not that great. I think I gave it 2.5 stars. And again, you know what? I think it's actually a two star. I think it has to be. I think I did enjoy reading it more than it's coming across right now. But when I look back on it, all I can remember are the things that I didn't really like. I still don't think I am a romance reader. Although I say that and immediately the next book is Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman, which I, I mean, I guess this is romance. This is a romance graphic novel series and I marked this book as read because this book came out in January as its published form, but this is a webcomic that you can read online and I have been keeping up with this and so I had read everything that was in this volume. Does that make sense? I first read this webcomic slash graphic novel series during Contemporary-a-thon and I absolutely fell in love with it. This is a YA graphic novel series about these two boys in the UK. It's about them becoming friends at school and then the romance that develops between them and it is just pure joy and happiness and love. 
it is everything. It's so good. I feel like I've been talking about these a lot lately, so I don't have much more to add. Once this third book was published, I just marked it as read because I technically have read it. Someday soon I will acquire all of the physical volumes of this series and I'm going to reread them in their physical form. I gave this, like the other two volumes, really solid four stars. Love it. And then the last book that I have to talk about is a children's picture book that I just squeezed in right at the end of the month. I reread an old favorite of mine, Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. This is a book that I absolutely loved in my childhood. It is about this little bat named Stella Luna and she and her mom are out flying one day and they get attacked by an owl and Stella Luna falls and loses her mom. She ends up in a bird's nest and she's raised by this bird with her new bird siblings. And it's about her growing up as a kind of the weirdo in the family. And then when she is finally old enough to fly out on her own, she reconnects with her that family as well. It's just adorable. I love the illustrations in this book. The night sky, the adorable pictures of Stella Luna when she's a little baby bat. They're so cute. They really look like real animals, but they're just the slightest bit exaggerated to make it more palatable for kids and just to give the characters more expression. I really, really love these illustrations. I think this story is super cute. I love Stella Luna, the bat, with all my heart. It's very touching, very sweet. I think this book is definitely a 3.5, but I would bump it up to four stars just for the nostalgia because this is like one of my favorite picture books from my childhood. So yeah, that was super fun to read and revisit. I love Stella Luna. And that is it. Those are the nine books that I read in January. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.